Speech off. Okay. Welcome. Come on and sit down. So what's your name? Kira. Kira. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to say that um, you know, anything said between you and I stays between you and I. Confidentiality. You understand what that is, right? Yes. Okay. Um, unless, you know, you talk about hurting yourself or others in which, um, you know, by law, I have to report you. you. You understand that, right? Yes. Okay, so Kira, how old are you? I'm 39. 39? Mm -hmm. uh, do you prefer male or female pronouns or? Female. Female? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you are a female. Yes. Okay, awesome. So tell me a little bit about yourself, Kira. Um, well... I am a college student mm -hmm. um, in the social work program. Mm -hmm. I live in Waynesville, which is, you know, about 40 miles away from campus. Mm -hmm. I work part-time in, in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, and so what brings you in today? Uh, well, I'm getting towards the end of the semester and I'm feeling very stressed. Um, I don't like, I don't like how that feels. And I think I kind of want to like get catch it, catch it before it gets um, too weird, I guess. <laughs> so you want to catch it? like? Yeah, like I want to work on that, that, that anxiety, dealing with the things in, instead of, you know, having a crisis and then, you know, feeling like I have to work myself out of it or something. I don't know. All right, so... Uh, I'm, I'm hearing that school is causing a lot of stress for you right now because, mm -hmm. of course, it's nearing the end of the semester. And you want to catch it or prevent it from happening before things get crazy. Yeah, I yeah. I just want to, I know I noticed that I'm not feeling too great and it's probably a good idea to talk to somebody. When did you first start noticing that? Well... Um, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of notice when I'm going off track in my life with my feelings. I have a tendency to get depressed and stuff like that. For the school thing, it's just another layer mm -hmm. of of things that need to be done and I mean I guess over, I just really over the last few weeks it's it's this time around when I have no I've noticed that like okay you are gonna lose it so go talk to somebody so this is a pattern you said this oh, time around yes absolutely mm -hmm. all right so what starts the pattern well School is a whole new thing for me. Mm -hmm. So in when I'm talking about school, I don't really know how to talk about a pattern. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know. Um, how does this pattern start? It just feel okay. Well, just throughout my life, I can feel like I just want to give up on something um, when it gets hard. It's like it, it affects me so much um, that I I don't want to do it anymore. Sort of thing. It's just like it need I need it to stop, kind of, and I don't see a way out of it, so I'll quit. Okay. How about that. So the pattern has persisted before you started school. Yeah, well, if I think about it, you know, as like a student, I'm o an older student now, but I have been a student in the past, and um, I panicked and quit, 
and also in relationships too. I might panic and quit. So this has been a pattern that things get to a point where there's turbulence of some sort. Maybe there's an instability in your life of some sort. And so you let go and you find something else. You quit and proceed forward somewhere else, right? Is that well, what I'm yeah. hearing? If I'm wrong, you feel free to tell me. Well, sure. I mean, I do. I mean, I quit. And, sure. I mean, I have to proceed. I just do something else or I just do some form of the same thing over again. I don't know. Can you tell me about the first time you quit doing something that you can remember? Um, Whether it be a relationship or a job or a something where you felt like this pattern originated. And it may not be the first time, but like... In yeah, event, but, yeah. For I guess, I don't know about it being the first time, but for sure, like dropping out of high school mm -hmm. was that. That was a big thing. Well, tell me about that pattern. What started there? Um, it started just with family stuff, not having good, a good, a good home life and moving in with different relatives and switching schools a lot. And I kind of just got to the point where I was just, did, I stopped caring about, it kind of, it, it kind of just was like, what is this and why am I doing it and do I have to do it? Kind of just, uh, I don't know. Um, I stopped caring. I was anxious in school, always very anxious, even in kindergarten. So um, I think at some point after so many things going on, like moving and moving in with a, another relative and this and that, it kind of all, I kind of was like, oh, what? I don't really have to do this. I'm, I feel so much anxiety over this. I don't actually have to do it. I'm old enough now where it's like nobody can stop me kind of, maybe. Like, I'm in charge or something. So it's like a self-sabotage, self maybe? I don't know. Self-sabotage? Potentially, potentially self-sabotage. I don't know. Self-sabotage, that sounds like a great way to describe it. I mean, <clears throat> it comes down to, you know, your stress, your anxiety, and then you're thinking, how can I stop those immediately? Mm -hmm. really how can I stop yeah. that no matter the cost, even if it's detrimental to success? How can yes. I stop that? Mm -hmm. You know, because your anxiety and your stress must be so high that you're willing to sacrifice success to get rid of them. That's what yeah, I'm hearing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so, how's that panned out overall? Sorry about that. How has that panned, panned out over the years with stress building up and anxiety and then sacrificing whatever it takes to prevent those from escalating? Um, well, in some ways, I have sort of kept my life simple. Um, I haven't... I haven't um, allowed myself to want very much. Um, I have not, I have no desire to be like in a position of um, power at work. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a hard worker. I get offered, you know, oh, do you want to be the assistant manager or the manager? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in that position. Um, mm. I, uh, I mean, maybe haven't, I don't know. I mean, I've kept it simple, and when I feel it getting a little crazy, that that's when it can be um, time to change or time to make it. Time to change. 
make it like I'm not to just be like I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, so what I think, from based off of what I'm hearing you say, the big problem is how do I prevent the stress and the anxiety from being so high? So that in your own words, you know, you said sabotage, self-sabotage, so that I don't self-sabotage. Yeah. Because you know? clearly the fact that you're having those thoughts means that, I mean, you're clear, you're aware that you are self-sabotaging and you see the benefit of doing it being relieving stress and anxiety, but the reward at the end of whatever it is you're leaving never happens. Right. Also, you're preventing yourself from achieving more. Mm -hmm. From my own perspective, not taking a management position. No, I don't want that anxiety. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that if you don't want the position. No, I don't. You know, and if you don't want it, that's great. But ultimately, I feel like the question comes down to how do I control anxiety and, and you know, stress? Like, yes. I feel like that's really the core problem here. Do you, would you agree with that? Yes. In all aspects of your life, I imagine. Especially yeah. based off what you said. I mean, you gave me an example. You said you remember having anxiety and being stressed all the way in kindergarten. Oh, yeah, big time. I mean, kindergarten, you're a little kid, you know? You're a little toddler running around, and you're full of all these, all this anxiety and stress, and you're already thinking of, what do I, what's the first thing I can How do to do prevent this? How do I not this? have to do this anymore? Yeah. And as at such a young age, what's the simplest solution? Just don't do the thing that's causing it. You know what I mean? Right, and I feel right, like, right, yeah. Yeah, oh, being in a relationship. You said relationship earlier. Mm -hmm. That's causing anxiety and stress? Okay, then I won't be in a relationship. Working in this job, being at school, you said you quit high school, you said you've quit schools before. Oh, how do I prevent this? Just stop the thing that's causing it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that is a solution because it's, of course it is. You're, it works to a degree, but how can you achieve if that's the solution every time? Yeah. And so what are some ways, I mean, would you agree with that? Do you agree with everything I just said before we proceed? Yeah, forward? I do. I do agree. Um, definitely about the, yeah, it's hard to know what I actually want or would want to achieve because I don't allow myself achievement. I have, you know, done things that I'm proud of, but mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know, it's weird. I feel like the programming that you have in your brain, where once the stress and anxiety reaches a level, now it's time to abandon ship. I feel like that's something that, you know, has been with you for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And so the pro then the question becomes, how do you control your own personal anxiety and stress? Like, what it, what are things that you do in your day-to-day -day life? Mm -hmm. Let's start there. And then I, after that, I want to proceed forward to what things in life are worth anxiety and stress. Because you know as well as mm -hmm. I do, you can never fully eliminate these things, right? Yes. So that means your goals have to outweigh the potential anxiety and stress. For example, you know, like, what is worth suffering for? Everything in life is has a form of suffering. Even when you yeah. quit doing things for and you know to lower your anxiety and stress, you're you're also suffering because you're leaving the relationship. Your connection with that individual is gone. You you quit high school. You didn't get the diploma, so it's harder to get a job. You know, based off of having that degree. Like there's forms of suffering you may not be looking at that's also causing anxiety and stress in different ways. It's just not as easily identifiable. So let's go back and, and ask, what do you do now to help with stress and anxiety? Um, I walk and I garden and mm -hmm. do craft sort of stuff. But it like all that stuff, it's like when you have to do this in this amount of time and this and that amount of time, like, well, you can't really garden when you have to have this paper or whatever. So I don't really know the walking. I still do that It's and it is helping. But like this morning I didn't walk because I don't have like the time. And I find myself 
you know, typically I would get up and walk and I got up at the normal time, but instead of walking, I said, well, you need to keep working on this assignment. But I didn't, and I got it done, but I wasted a lot of time just staring at it anyways. It's like my stress has inhibits me from even thinking clearly. All right, so you've identified that stress prevents you from being successful at work or working on things. Yes. So would it have been more beneficial for you to have actually gotten the walk and it then may, work on the assignment? It may have. Um, yes, it may have been. In this case, I just, I don't know. I feel like there's a little bit more to it, though. Yes, it would have been, I should have just walked because it didn't make a difference. I got the thing done, but I've spent an hour, the hour I would have spent walking, staring at the computer. Uh, I don't know. It's been 15 minutes. That's fine, it can go longer. I, so tell me, so walking is a good stress reliever. Your schedule is packed right now. Mm -hmm. And so you're having to sacrifice things that usually help with stress management. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like that is giving a better outcome than actually doing things that prevent stress as well? Um, I think in general, like if, It's just kind of weird, just the way I work. I need a lot of time to do everything as far as schoolwork goes. So where somebody else might knock it out, I do not knock it out. I will, it will actually turn into like not turning it in. If I don't give myself the time, it won't get done. So it's a little bit, I feel a little bit like weird about that. Mm -hmm. So in so, yes, yeah, some days, I realize, okay, you have some leeway here. You can do something that's enjoyable. It's just right now, I don't feel like I even have the time to finish what I need to finish and that's stressing me out and leading me to not do, like not, like it's making me, it even harder for me to finish the projects. I don't know. So the stress is slowing down your rate of completion. Yeah, it's already. And so it's compounding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's compounding, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's rough. I think that that walking is very beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, the assignments are going to be there regardless. And you know that, and I know that. But... Based off of what you're telling me, not getting that walking in isn't changing the outcome of the work getting done. You no. said yourself you spent an extra hour just staring, yes. waiting, because you were so stressed out you didn't know what to do then. So, I mean, do you take, have you ever tried taking small breaks and just going outside and walking or getting some air, just well, leaving the scene? I mean, I do take small breaks or, you know, I, even just like, I got up, worked, kind of worked for an hour, and then I took a shower to get ready for school. Mm -hmm. So that kind of broke it up. And yes, that's what I do a lot of times when I don't have to work. I will um, work for, or when I don't have to go to my job, um, I will work on schoolwork, and then I'll go walk and come back. Well, um, would you be willing to go walking every day in the morning around the loop at least one time on top of doing your work do you feel like that's something you could do i yes well i do that already today i did not walk mm -hmm. but every other day i have so the question is what is all this for i don't know because you need the answer to that question because that's where you're going to find not strength sure what it's for like what what's the why what's the the point of all of this kara no. I guess to achieve a degree is one thing. Mm -hmm. um, Which should be celebrated. That's a big achievement. And potentially have a, 
a job that I actually think is valuable or is beneficial or does is something that's good, a good thing and not just a way to pay the bills, I guess. So you want to do good. Yeah, you want to benefit definitely. others. Mm -hmm. And this pathway will get you to that point. Maybe. <laughs> Can you tell me how this pathway will get you to that point? Well, getting this degree and if I really um, want it all, I would need to get a master's. Um, and then I would have opportunities to work in, in just more opportunity to work in a lot of different settings where it would be something that I would hope help people. It would. I think that is a great thing to keep in your mind when you go through the, your day-to-day -day tasks. You know, it's, I mean, because you have to have that end goal in mind or the purpose, you know, because without purpose, what is the point? Mm -hmm. And the purpose is to do good for others. Because when, if you get to the point of getting your master's, and I know you're capable of doing it, you're so smart. But when you get to that point, you'll be in a position of power and a gatekeeper to so many resources to people that need it. You know, that right there is going to be so beneficial to so many people. You know that, right? Yeah. So we need to work on the stress management for short-term success. Because the last thing we need, based off of everything you've told me, is for you to say, F it, turn around, and just drop everything and walk away. That's not going to get you to your purpose of helping the people. Do you think it will? Um, I don't, I mean, I guess not. it won't get me to the place where I help people and pay my bills. Mm -hmm. And if you can get both of those combined together, that's even better, right? Yeah. All right. Yep. So short term stress relievers while going walking, what's something that you, that else besides walking that you do regularly? Um, I don't know. I mean... Not much of anything. I'll, I will be gardening um, soon. I usually like to do that a lot. Um, and taking naps, I guess. <laughs> hey, don't. That's not something to laugh at. <laughs> Sleep is very good for regulating stress levels. That's a huge thing. So, yeah. well, I... I want, to, do you normally get enough sleep at night? Yeah, I do. Okay, good. And so you're going to be gardening more, especially mm -hmm. with summer coming around the corner. Yes. So if you just keep walking, take breaks as you need it. Um, and you got to be kind to yourself. Self-care is so important, you know? Yeah. Especially in the field that you and I are going into. You need self-care. Without that, it's, it's not, you know... It's not going to end well. So, can you promise me that you'll continue walking? Oh, yeah. And can you promise me that you will take breaks and give yourself time and love? Okay. Yeah. Don't sit there and stress. If you're sitting there for 10 minutes and your stress levels are rising and nothing's getting done, close the laptop oh, and give a yourself a moment. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point because there is no sense in just sitting there. No, there's it's, not. Nothing's happening. It's just so dumb. Yeah. So will you promise me that if you get in the moment where the stress is so high that nothing can get done, you'll yeah. just turn it off and you'll walk away for, for a little bit? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. So those are going to be your short-term goals, and I want you to hear back on that next time I see you. Okay. Long-term goal is going to be defining more of the future purpose, mm -hmm. okay? As well as looking at other potential stressors and trying to stop getting to the point of it's too high, it's time to bail. Yeah. You know, because we've, we've kind of touched briefly, briefly on it's been with you for pretty much your whole life. We didn't get to the exact point of where it started, but... I mean, that's, a, that's an old school programming. You've had that for many years. So well, being aware of that in the moment 
and knowing that that's the choice you don't have to take, you know, I'd like to work on that as well. Okay. Does that all of that, all of that sound like good goals to you? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I guess um, we'll schedule a time to meet for, you know, two weeks from now, and we'll proceed forward. Does that sound great? Yes, it does. Thank you. You're very welcome. Fatty tissue, I take <laughs> All right. Not crying. Uh, okay, good. For one time. Speech on. Oh, I hope this. Stop recording video. Okay. Uh, this is the end of the video. Bye.